The 2020s has seen somewhat of a revolution in the way that the average person wants to critique the CEOs of major corporations. From people memeing on Elon Musk after he recently bought Twitter, to Jeff Bezos's phallic space rocket, the public has taken the concept of big company CEOs from people to be respected and admired under all circumstances, to those who deserve not just criticism, but extra criticism. And extra criticism is funny. And this desire to mock big CEOs makes a lot of sense. After all, in comedy, one of the most common principles is the punch up. Or the idea that when someone has more social power than you in a given situation, usually due to their wealth or their position of authority, then making fun of them is funny. Whereas making fun of people with less means tends to come off as more mean-spirited. And with a combination of wealth and authority, CEOs of large companies are the perfect targets for criticism, jokes, and lots of memes. Lots of memes. So what do you do if you're a CEO of a successful company, but you wanna be cool? You don't want the kids making fun of you. You want them to think that you're awesome. Well, if you're a fellow millennial who doesn't want to face the criticism of your peers, but rather gain that celebrity status that CEOs of the past used to have, you become not like other CEOs. You basically become Amy Poehler in Mean Girls being like, I'm not like other moms, I'm a cool mom. And in the realm of business, you become the cool CEO. Enter Dan Price. He's not like other CEOs, you guys. He's a cool CEO. He looks like Thor. Women supposedly find him hot, apparently. And not only that, but he's the cool CEO for the anti-capitalist millennials. That's right, the capitalist for the socialists. He supports Bernie Sanders. He speaks up on Twitter about injustice. In 2015, he became famous when he, in his own words, took a massive pay cut in order to increase his employees' starting salaries, allowing the starting salary at his company to go up to $70,000 a year. I mean, just look at the guy on Twitter. Look at him right here. His bio even says that he wants to stand up for the underdog. Look at his pinned tweet. If you're giving out 5% annual pay raise right now, you're giving a pay cut. Look at this man taking into account the way that inflation and cost of living adjustments are going to affect his employees. Corporations, highest profit since 1950. Oil companies, highest profit in seven plus years. Shipping company, record profit, grew seven times in one year. CEO pay, highest ever, up 1,322% in four decades. Open eyes, sheeple. He even calls out the shitty CEOs, the ones who aren't like him. Companies that pay their CEOs over a thousand times more than their median worker. Gap, Chipotle, Ross, Nike, Coke, Dick's, BJ's, Foot Locker, KFC, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Starbucks, McDonald's, Kohl's, Walmart, and 45 others. How come worker pay contributes to inflation, but CEO pay doesn't? Look at this man. He wants to be the CEO for the people. We should all strive to be more like Dan Price. Or should we? Is it possible that Dan Price isn't actually a cool, chill guy who just happens to be a CEO but really wants to advocate for the people, but rather a performative, fake, woke boss bro in disguise? Yeah, of course it's possible. We wouldn't be having this video otherwise. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. Welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. And this video is going to be about business, but it's leading into a book review that is coming. So if you want to see more videos about books and business, which includes book reviews, particularly of shitty business and self-help books, critiques of the multi-level marketing industry and talks about the anti-MLM movement, writing videos, videos about all that kind of stuff and more, then you'll want to subscribe to this channel where I put out new videos every Friday at 11 a.m. Central and often multiple other times throughout the week as well as my second channel your morning guru linked in the description below where we stream live every morning at 7 a.m central to do a morning show about similar topics live but before we delve too deep into today's topic quickly we've got a word from today's sponsor today's video is sponsored by magic spoon a high protein low carb breakfast cereal that comes in a variety of awesome flavors do you guys remember in the beginning of 2021 when i tried to host live streams while i was cooking and do you remember how in one of them i had to end the stream early because because I almost set an oven mitt on fire. Oh my God, am I setting the, the pot holder on fire? Yeah, I 
set the pot holder on fire. Yeah, in case you guys haven't noticed, cooking really isn't my strong suit. Combine that with the fact that I'm constantly working on this channel, on my company Forever Home Friends, and on my novels. Well, as you guys can guess, I don't really have a ton of time to think about cooking and meal prep and all of that. So that's why I'm really grateful that one of my meals each day is already taken care of. I know I can plan to have a bowl of tasty cereal every day, which will provide me with the protein I need while I'm working on weightlifting, and it won't cause me to set anything on fire. Magic Spoon cereals have 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. They all have zero grams of sugar with the exception of the new honey nut flavor, which has one gram of sugar per serving because of the real honey they use to make it. Magic Spoon cereals also have only 140 calories per serving and are keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can build your very own variety box and choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry, and cinnamon, plus the new reformulated honey nut flavor that will now be added to the permanent collection. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. And also, for my Canadian and British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and to the UK as well. So guys, if this cereal sounds good to you, go ahead and click the link in my description below and use the code SAVVY to get $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash savvy to save $5 on your order today. Additionally, I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters for helping keep this channel going. You guys are great. Patreon supporters are listed on the screen and in the description below, you can see Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up, who can link their own small businesses, social media pages, causes, or anything else they want in the description. So go ahead and check out those links as well. Now, on to Dan Price. He's not a Dave, but he is a Dan. I don't think Dan's Dave's, they have some of the similar letters, but honestly, Savvy and Dave's share as many of the same letters as Dan and Dave do, so what am I even talking about? Dan Price was born in 1984 as the son to Ron Price, who we'll talk about in just a moment. At age 20 in 2004, Dan and his older brother Lucas started a credit card processing company together called Gravity Payments, which has since grown into a huge corporation. In 2015, at age 31, Dan Price made the decision that put him on the map as one of the good CEOs. This decision him to take a pay cut in order to raise the salaries of all of his employees. He made the decision that at Gravity Payments, every employee's starting salary would be $70,000 per year, a decision that he claims he made based on what the cost of living would be, cost for all of your essentials, things like that. And in order to do this, he took a cut to his own salary as CEO. Since getting famous and going viral online for this amazing sacrifice, Dan Price became famous and even wrote a book about the topic called worth it, which I'm currently reading and will review on this channel sometime next month. But as I mentioned earlier, already from the beginning of this book, I've learned something interesting about Dan Price and his beginnings. The MLM connections. Every time someone becomes really successful young, we always want to know how did they get there? Enter those memes that go around Twitter about being successful where it's like, how I became a CEO at 21 years old. Step one, wake up at 4 a.m. every day. Step two, drink a protein shake. Step three, meditate for 30 minutes. Step four, write down my affirmations. Step five, stay focused on the grind. Step six, dad owns a giant tech company. Well, in Dan Price's case, his dad didn't own a giant tech company, but as Dan points out in his book, entrepreneurship had long been valued in his family. And it's often a lot easier to get your company off the ground when your family has money. Basically what I'm getting at is Dan Price's father had money, money that he made being the president of a multi-level marketing company. That's right, meet Ron Price, former president of the AIM companies, AIM companies. I don't know, I had never actually heard of this MLM before, so I'm gonna be diving into it for the video where I review the book in the future. But this was a company that sold supplements, nutrition supplements, things like that in the MLM structure. Dan Price even admits this in his book he admits that it was a direct sales company and even calls it a dubious multi-level marketing structure. Yet despite that, he still seems to hold his father on a pedestal as an example of honest work. And we'll delve into all of that more when we review this book in a couple weeks. But for now, I just want to point out that Dan Price's first business education began with MLMs. But savvy, you might say, just because his dad was the president of an MLM that likely ruined tons of people's lives, that doesn't mean Dan himself did anything wrong. In fact, it sounds like Dan has been up to some 
great things and trying to improve people's lives greatly. If his dad was an exploitative boss, it looks like Dan's maybe trying to learn from his mistakes and do a better job for other people. That's admirable. And I agree, if not for the Bloomberg expose that came out in December of 2015. The one that didn't get as much attention as I thought it would. The one that delved into the ways that Dan's business dealings have been less than pure over the years, and also exposed the fact that in a lot of ways, he allegedly has been mistreating a lot of women for a long time. So let's talk about the Bloomberg expose along with the allegations of Dan Price's mistreatment of women. First, the Bloomberg expose. The CEO paying everyone $70,000 salaries has something to hide inside the viral story of Gravity CEO Dan Price. Article by Karen Weiss, December 1st, 2015. It seemed too good to be true. On April 13th, with reporters from the New York Times and NBC News hovering nearby, Dan Price, the young chief executive officer of Gravity Payments, a Seattle-based credit card processing company, told his staff he was raising their minimum salary to $70,000 a year. Some employees would see their wages double. There was more. He planned to cut his own $1.1 million compensation to help cover the cost. The idea came to him, he'd later tell the media, after talking to a friend who earned less than he did. And also, he talks about this story in his book. It's uh, a little strange the way he talks about it, and we'll, we'll talk about that when we review the book. He'd read about a study showing that extra income improves the happiness of people that earn less than about $75,000. It's not about making money. It's about making the difference, Price told the Today Show, one of two dozen TV interviews he did in the days following the announcement. That's a thing that a true, not like other CEO would say. It's not about making money, it's about making a difference. Now let's get my company as much publicity for this as possible. And I just want to be clear, him wanting to get publicity for his company and have his company continue to do well after he did a supposedly good thing for employees, that's a good thing. Because in that case, we want the employees to continue prospering. I just have an issue with him as a person that we're going to go into. In late summer, the New York Times ran a longer piece on Price, now 31, showing that raising wages wasn't so simple. Job applicants had overwhelmed his company and two employees quit, saying the increase wasn't fair to higher earners. Potentially the worst blow of all, the Times wrote, was about two weeks after the announcement, Price was sued by his older brother Lucas, who owns about 30% of Gravity, alleging Price paid himself too much in the first place. Price insinuated that his brother may have sued in reaction to the generous pay increase. I know the decision to pay everyone a living wage is controversial, he told the Seattle Times, which first reported the lawsuit. I deeply regret the rift this has caused in my relationship with my brother. So what this seems to be getting at is the fact that Dan Price allegedly may have been inflating artificially his own salary in the first place. $1.1 million maybe wasn't what he himself should have been paying himself in the first place. It wasn't that he was paying himself a good amount of money that was about the right amount for him and then took a big cut for the sake of making his employees' lives better, but rather that his brother was saying, uh, you're actually paying yourself too much as per our agreement, so you need to cut your own salary, and then he used this as a way to spin that. So that's what this article is going to delve into those allegations in just a second. So this journalist who was interviewing Dan Price says, I brought up the lawsuit asking if Price thought gravity's spending on the raises triggered his brother's suit, as he'd implied. I have no idea, he slowly shrugged, looking right at me. The quote in the Seattle Times from his attorney was, it was only because of that. He twisted his beard between two fingers, contemplating the statement by Lucas, his attorney. That one singular quote in the paper is the only information I have about if they were connected or not. So Dan Price is basically over here saying, uh, no, this lawsuit has nothing to do with this, the pay increases for the employees and my pay cut and my brothers suing me has nothing to do with each other as far as I know. It's a poignant story, one that I almost wrote, until I realized Price knew more than he was letting on. The lawsuit couldn't have been prompted by the pay raise. If anything, it may have been the other way around. And his salary before the big announcement was unusually high. As I read through the court record and media reports, I began to see how Price was writing his own origin myth one interview at a time. Time. With what he says is a $500,000 book deal, he's solidifying his place as the next do-gooder businessman. In 2013, Price says Gravity hired compensation consultant Towers Watson to look at his salary. The Towers Watson recommendation allowed for significant raises over the $1.1 million, but I elected not to raise my pay, he says. Lucas's attorney says Price is mischaracterizing the findings. When Price made his $70,000 announcement, he told his staff, my pay is set based on market rates and kind kind of what it would take to replace me. And because of this growing inequality as a CEO, that amount is really, really high. I make, uh, you know, a crazy, uh, my compensation is really, really high. Whether judged by gross or net revenue, Price's pay was atypical for a company its size. Gravity's finances aren't public, but Price says gross revenue was $150 million in 2014 and will rise to an estimated $200 million in 2015. But Gravity doesn't get to keep the bulk of that revenue. It must automatically pass most of it on to credit card networks and issuers. The amount the company retains, net revenue, which 
which Price calls a probably more a more relevant figure, was $16 million in 2014. He says Gravity's 2014 profit was $2.2 million. At private companies with salaries like Gravity's total revenue, salary and bonus for the top quartile of CEOs is $710,000, according to Chief Executives Magazine's annual compensation survey. At companies with sales like Gravity's net revenue, the top quartile pay falls to about $373,000. At companies with a similar number of employees as Gravity, the top quartile of CEOs makes $470,000 in salary and bonus. The CEO of JetPay, a publicly traded competitor that processes a similar volume as Gravity, received $355,000 in 2014. So basically what this is getting at here is the fact that Dan Price was saying, you know, I was paying myself $1.1 million because that's what I was worth on a market level. That was my market value. Meanwhile, his brother, who was his co-founder in the company and his partner, along along with the data from other CEOs of similarly sized companies is showing that he was paying himself a lot more than CEOs of companies his size were actually paying themselves. So he may have been just taking too much money for himself in the first place. After meeting Price and researching the figures, I called to ask if he thought his $1.1 million pay was fair given those benchmarks. He replied, I appreciate you asking the question. I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. I'm way over time and there's a bunch of people waiting for me. When we spoke later, he said, I have never given myself a raise without unanimous full board approval. That means we both voted the same way. Lucas Price and Daniel Price, the two board members. Uh, Holland, who's Price's lawyer, says that's inaccurate and that Price paid himself excessive compensation for a number of years over Lucas's objections. So he's claiming, I paid myself what my brother and I agreed on. His brother is saying, no, he paid himself too much. I never agreed to that. Also, when the reporter called to ask these questions, he kind of dodged it and was like, oh, I don't have a lot of time right now. We'll talk later. So a little bit sus acting a little sus like he's gonna go to SusCon. As he's recounted over and over, Price says his aha moment about pay came in late March on a hike with his friend. I realized that there were people I was working with that I said I valued as partners, I said I really want to invest in, and they were making less than her, he told The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. Price says he thought back to a 20 Nobel Prize winners, Daniel Kahneman and uh, Angus Deaton, who found that people's emotional well-being improves as their earnings rise until their pay reaches about $75,000 a year. Price's hiking friend Valerie Molina remembers their exchange. Dan said, I'm going to pay all my employees a minimum $70,000. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. I need to run the numbers, but I, ha I am. Is that crazy? Gravity had about 120 employees, and they earned a little less than $50,000 on average. He found it would cost about $1.8 million to increase wages to $70,000 in steps over three years. Cutting his own pay would cover much of that, and if the wage hikes made his staff more productive, he figured the whole move just might work. This is where uh, he started to take off with people being like, oh, you made that work by raising everyone's pay. Your company became more profitable and things became better. That's honestly one reason that I became interested in his book in the first place, because I'm like, well, I'm a business owner. I want to learn about being more profitable and trying to be as ethical of a business owner as possible. Maybe he can help. By 3 a.m. the next morning after the announcement, Price's phone was buzzing. The Today Show wanted him the next morning, as did Good Morning America. He hopped a plane to New York. I did something like 25 five live TV interviews in three days, he says, we are really passionate about reforming credit card processing. This seemed like an opportunity. We could have a really big impact doing that. So I think there's two ways you can kind of take that. First being like, oh, was he just doing this for the publicity to raise his own company's profits? But on the other side, I think this in a vacuum isn't necessarily bad because it's like, okay, if someone's getting lots of positive publicity for their company doing well after they raise employee salaries, that could be good for other CEOs to follow suit and say, hmm, maybe I should raise salaries. You know, people talk about like there's a labor shortage when in reality, there's a people don't want to pay enough money to you shortage, right? It's people don't want to work for, for not a living wage. So if it had been able to influence other companies to do better, I would say good for him. But let's let's see where, what happened next. So now we're kind of getting into the part where his brother and business partner decided to file a lawsuit against him. The possible retaliatory nature of the suit only adds to the drama of Price's wage hike. This is all speculation on my part, Perkle said in late September before explaining how, as a minority shareholder, Lucas gets paid dividends from Gravity's profits. Those profits are obsolete when you raise the wages. His brother's like, that's my money. Perkle suggested to me that the lawsuit could be part of a broader narrative about the purpose of business. Is it to maximize shareholder returns, or is it best to serve the customers and provide for employees? Inc. hypothesized that Lucas filed the lawsuit after the pay increase, perhaps to pressure Dan to sell when Gravity was in the limelight, thus maximizing the profit of Lucas's share. But there's a problem with all those scenarios. The lawsuit predates the raise. 
Lucas did file the case two weeks after Price's announcement, but according to court records, Price was served with the suit at his house on the afternoon of March 16th, about two weeks before the fabled hike with his friend and almost a month before the wage increase announcement. Lucas's attorney says Price informed his brother of the pay hike through an email on April 9th, only four days before the New York Times and NBC descended on Seattle. The lawsuit is light on details, but it claims that Price improperly used his majority control of the company to overpay himself in the process process reducing what Lucas was due. Daniel's actions have been burdensome, harsh, and wrongful, and have shown a lack of fair dealing toward Lucas, the suit alleges. It asks for unspecified damages and that price buy out Lucas's interest in gravity. Holland said the lawsuit was the culmination of years of efforts to resolve Lucas's concerns. Price on several occasions suggested to Lucas that if Lucas didn't like Dan's actions regarding Lucas's rights as a shareholder, Lucas should seek legal remedies. Prior to the lawsuit, Dan had made clear that he would only engage with Lucas through Lucas's counsel. So basically his brother's like, hey, you own slightly more of the company than I do, and as a result, you're using this to pay yourself more, which I didn't agree to. And then after he got served a lawsuit for it, Dan was like, what if I spin this as I'm cutting my pay in order to raise the pay of all of my employees? Then I'll look like the good guy, and my brother won't look like the good guy if he opposes it, because how could you oppose wanting to raise your employees' pay more? He's gonna look like the asshole if he goes against me. That's what we're getting into now. If the lawsuit wasn't a reaction to the wage hike, could it have been the other way around? After all, Price announced his magnanimous act a month after his brother sued him for, in essence, being greedy. Lowering his pay could give Price negotiating leverage, too. With profits, at least in the short term, shifted to salaries, there is little left over to buy out his brother, the New York Times reported, Price said. In a follow-up interview in mid-November, I pressed Price about the inconsistency. How could what he told me about being served two weeks after announcing the raise be true when the court records indicated otherwise? wise. So here's where Price gets a little sus again. Um, I'm not, I have to look, he said. The court document, I said, definitely said March 16th. I'm only aware of the suit being initiated after the raise, he replied. The court record shows you being served on March 16th at 1.25 p.m., I said, and actually your answer to it was dated April 3rd, also before the pay hike. I am only aware of the suit being initiated after the raise, he repeated. I asked again how that could be, saying the declaration of service shows Price was served with the complaint, the summons, and other documents that you are male who is white, age 30, 5 feet 8 inches, medium height, dark hair. He paused for 20 seconds. Are you there? He asked, then twice repeated his statement that he was only aware of the suit being initiated in late April. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have, he added. So that's the overview of what happened regarding the kind of suspicious nature of the reason he increased employee pay and cut his own pay. Again, I just want to make it very clear that I do think him increasing employee pay is a net benefit and I think other CEOs should try to learn from it. But I think it's weird that he's being kind of hailed as this big social media personality who's a universally good guy and he's the cool guy who's not like other CEOs when in reality it seems like this was above all else a move to get himself away from having the image of a greedy guy because he was actually paying himself too much beforehand. However, all of that pales in comparison comparison to what we're about to look at next, which is both within the Bloomberg article we're going to continue, and then we're going to look at a separate article, which basically goes into some of the allegations about Dan Price's repeated mistreatment and abuse of women. Price's life may get more complicated the week of December 7th, when Ted X plans to post online a public talk by his former wife, who changed her last name to Cologne. She spoke on October 28th at the University of Kentucky about the power of writing to overcome trauma. Cologne stood on the stage wearing cerulean blue and without naming Price, read from a journal entry she says she wrote in May 2006 about her then-husband. He got mad at me for ignoring him, grabbed me and shook me again, she read. He also threw me to the ground and got on top of me. He started punching me in the stomach and slapped me across the face. I was shaking so bad. Later in the talk, Cologne recalled once locking herself in a car, afraid he was going to body slam me into the ground again or waterboard me in our upstairs bathroom like he had done before. So the journalist who was writing this article said, I read those quotes to Price. I'm going to take a second because this is very surprising to me, he said. He paused. I appreciate and respect my former wife, and she played a very positive role in my life, he said. Out of respect for her, I wouldn't feel comfortable responding to a supposed allegation she may have said coming from a Bloomberg Businessweek reporter when I have absolutely zero evidence for an allegation being made. I told him that I wanted to be clear. I was giving him the chance to deny the claims. 
My comment is very responsive, he said. I would be more than happy to provide a comment if and when I actually get the benefit of seeing what you are referencing. About three hours later, Price called back. There's one more thing that I would like to add to my previous statement, he said. The events that you described never happened. So just to be clear, he, his ex-wife accused him basically of abuse. She didn't name him, but she was doing a TEDx talk about the power of overcoming trauma through journaling and writing. And she talked about, you know, all of these things that she was afraid of with her previous husband. Her last name was changed at this point. I don't think she was marketing herself in any way as being his ex-wife. So I think that I don't know how other people put this together, but I don't think she was trying to outwardly accuse him or do a campaign against him personally. I tend to want to give people the benefit of, yeah, I think I, I want to believe you as a victim. So I was a little bit like, ooh, this doesn't sound good. It sounds like he probably was abusing his ex-wife. But again, that's alleged. I am, I don't have proof. This is just me saying what's been reported on. However, considering something else was recently reported, I'm inclined to believe even more so than I did before that these abuse allegations may very well be true. While this article from Bloomberg came out in 2015, which is now almost seven years ago, there's a new article that came out just this past year, which says a lot more about it. So here we have an article from, I don't know if it's Cairo 7, Kiro 7 News, called Gravity Payment CEO Dan Price Charged with Sexual Assault Amid Ongoing Felony Rape Investigation. Dan Price, Gravity Payment CEO, who is CEO national attention to company-wide wage discrepancies by raising his employees' minimum salaries to $70,000, has been charged with two counts of fourth-degree assault and one count of reckless driving in Seattle Municipal Court. The charges stem from an alleged assault with sexual motivation. Price is also being investigated for felony rape of a drugged victim, charges stemming from a Palm Springs incident in April 2021, according to Palm Springs Police Department report. That case will be referred to the Riverside County District Attorney's Office in the near future, a spokesperson for the Palm Springs Police Department tells My Northwest. The district attorney was not able to confirm if charges will ultimately be brought against Price, according to a spokesperson. In this latest instance, Seattle police records say that Price had agreed to meet a woman at a downtown restaurant on January 20th. Price allegedly became intoxicated at the restaurant. While the victim was hailing an Uber, Price was said to have offered to let her wait for a ride in his own vehicle. At the time, Price reportedly made a sexual advance, at which, which point she pushed him away and then he grabbed her throat, the police record reads. The report goes on to describe how Price drove off with the woman still in the car. They arrived at the Northgate Park and Ride, at which point Price began doing donuts in the top parking lot. Price then allegedly tried kissing her again after she pushed him away the second time. He grabbed her throat and was pulsing his hand for minutes. The situation de-escalated, at which point the victim was assisted by a friend of off the parking lot. Price is scheduled for a Seattle Municipal Court hearing on April 22nd. And if that weren't enough, in addition, there were other allegations that happened in 2021 as well. According to 180degrees.com, there's an article from August 25th, 2021. So we have from 2015, his ex-wife's abuse allegations from her TEDx talk. We have from April of 2022, the investigation being done about the woman who claimed he assaulted her in the car. And now we also have a story of new allegations from August 25th, 2021. So this is three separate instances. It started with this message. Happy Valentine's Day, beautiful. It ended with a police report titled Rape of Drugged Victim Felony. On April 15th of this year, almost exactly six years after his wage announcement, Price stood before a very different audience. He demanded to speak with the highest ranking manager at the Ace Hotel in Palm Springs, California. That manager was Ryan Saunders. According to Saunders' account in a police report, it was 10 p.m. when Price said he needed to check out a day early. His date apparently fell asleep while they were engaged in intercourse. He said she felt uncomfortable. So I'm not going to read the rest of this article out loud because it goes into very, very graphic detail about what uh, allegedly happened. But basically what she is saying is that he was continuing to have sexual interaction with her after she fell asleep. And the next day she went to go get a rape kit done and report this to the authorities. So what's just so wild to me though is with the lawsuit that went on with his brother, with the speculation about his reasons for actually increasing his pay and whether he was being greedy in the first place, and with three different accusations of having violently abused and mistreated and assaulted women, 
how all of this has been flying under the radar. I haven't seen anyone else do a video about him yet, which is why I decided to do one. And I've mostly been seeing a lot of people on, you know, business Twitter kind of worshipping him still as this type of hero who's one of the cool CEOs who's not like other CEOs. It's kind of weird that he's been the one to kind of fly under the radar of the big cancel culture that's supposedly taking over. And in a lot of cases, accusations like this would be career ending for a lot of people. So I'm really wondering what is causing him to still maintain such a strong reputation and not have kind of lost all of his credibility. But I'm really interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will be reviewing his book pretty soon and we'll go into a little more of the details there, reviewing it from the perspective of having all of this knowledge of the accusations of the women who have been mistreated by him, as well as the context surrounding, you know, whether or not his intentions truly were good with his big pay hike announcement in the first place. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys learned something. I will see you guys again next week for more videos. But in the meantime, keep on supporting those small businesses out there and leave me suggestions in the comments for new ethical business owners to follow because he's not one of them. Have a great start to your Friday. Bye everyone. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up Leslie. Chicago. You guys asked for it.